Hello. Myself, Alessandra, Reese, and Ruha will be presenting our ethylene production plant. The world as we know it relies heavily on the simplest olefin known as ethylene. It is used for several purposes, but especially in the polymers industry to create polyethylene. Polyethylene is most commonly used plastic, mainly for packaging purposes, and plays a monumental role in society today and will continue to do so for the foreseeable future. Three alternative feedstocks exist for creating ethylene, and they are ethane, naphtha, and ethanol. Ethane was chosen for its high yield of ethylene, low cost, and low process emissions compared to the others. Ethylene will be produced through the steam cracking of ethane. This process can be broken down into three stages known as cracking and quenching, compression and drying, and separation. These stages are highlighted on the PDF for further context into the magnitude of the process. The finished ethylene product will produce approximately 660,000 tons per year at a purity greater than 99.9%. The designed ethylene production plant will be located in Red Deer, Alberta due to its close proximity to the required raw materials and nearby polyethylene production plants that can utilize the ethylene product. In order to ensure that our design was created both reliably and accurately, it is important to ensure that both the mass and energy balances are accurate throughout. Using the stream tables generated from our Aspen Plus simulation software design, we were able to determine both the inlet and outlet flows of mass and energy to the individual process units. To satisfy the laws of mass and energy conservation, the amount of material and energy entering a process unit is required to balance with the amount leaving. For the purposes of simplicity, it is assumed that these balances operated at steady state and there was negligible heat transfer to or from the environment. Each of the mass and energy balances equated to nearly zero and had less than a 1% error, which allowed us to validate these balances as can be seen in the slide in the green highlighted sections. Within the proposed ethylene production plant, there are a total of five distillation columns, three compressors, seven flash drums, one furnace, one quench tower, one caustic scrubber, one drying tower, 20 heaters, five pumps, and one reactor. The equipment was sized according to the design rate of our production plant, scaling up from the desired average ethylene production rate of 660,000 tons per year. All the equipment costs were calculated using the bare module costing method, using parameters found in the cost estimation tables. Using this costing method, the cost of labor, materials, inspection, piping, instrumentation, insulation, installation, utility connections, and building foundations are all accounted for. The total cost for all the equipment was calculated to be approximately $99 million. From a process safety perspective, our group worked to implement the six levels of safety in the design, including basic process control systems, alarms, SIS, relief systems, and containment routes. We conducted systematic reviews to increase flexibility, reliability, and operability by adding redundant sensors on critical streams, additional process control systems on large process units, and parallelization of equipment with different energy sources in the event of power outages. The following diagrams represent the process control systems implemented on a pressurized vessel and a heater. Safety is an extremely important factor to consider when designing any new plant or process. Safety was maintained primarily through using process control, as mentioned previously, as well as through a HAZOP analysis and material safety data on the chemicals produced from the design process. These chemicals are ethylene and methane. Three different nodes were chosen for the HAZOP analysis and various deviations were evaluated to ensure system responses maintained the safety of those working in or around the plant. The storage, handling, and transport of chemicals is also an area of concern as the chemicals produced are both extremely flammable and compressed gases. The total carbon dioxide equivalent emission produced from our plant is 500,000 tons per year, with most of our emissions coming from our furnace and caustic scrubber. Our total emissions is much lower compared to ethylene plants using feedstocks such as naphtha and ethanol, and is even 2.22 times lower than other plants using ethane as feedstock. Water usage includes sources from a river as cooling water and using brine water in low and medium pressure steam. The total capital cost to build our plant is $149 million. The total operating cost is $1.2 billion per year. 
Altogether, with selling our ethylene and other byproducts such as propylene, propane, and C4 products, in a 20-year project life, we expect to have an NPV of 132 million, with a break-even point being at seven years. The IRR of our project is expected to be 21.8%. Based on the environmental and economic factors, the project is viable. With that being said, our future plans include optimizing our plant, such as adding a recycle to decrease our material use and increase our profit. Thank you for listening, and we hope to see you on April 8th.